could see through them. I was just wondering, hey Mike, how you doing? I, I was just wondering, we're going, we're going good here. We're going all right here. We're, we're, we're riding fat. We are riding fat. We got a good crew up here. Huh? We got a good crew up here. Good. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We're, 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 this, is, this is working out well. Yeah, I was just wondering where Stuart about. That's what I was wondering. Yeah. Those are still in his store, but the high school ones that you can see through and you can fit like one leg in. Um, bear in a box. Okay. Okay. I did. Okay. Just like the ropes? Yeah. That's good. No, no. Does this call the service hours? This is kind of service hours. You want, to, you want to try and work on it? You want to try and work on it? Yeah, probably, probably should. Wouldn't hurt to find out, that's for sure. Maybe. Okay. I know. Still. Yeah. Give her some free time up there. So we're doing it today? No, I think so. so. No, no. Huh? I can't even right Okay. I didn't know if you even That's said, look, don't forget it, we'll do uh, it tomorrow. Or got the secret probation because the boat's not already in. Whoa. We'll see. You got all those free time holes. We got all those free time holes. Hi, Jamie. Hi. Your grandson is in the nursery with Sheila. Two peas in a pot? Is he safe with her? Is he safe with her? Yeah, it is. Yeah. I'm <laughs> going <laughs> I need to go find a seat. Huh? I need to go find a seat. Yes. Which you, side can I sit you, on this time? You guys look like zombies. Because you're just wandering, looking for the right seat. They want the other side, they want this side. Do I equal it out? I don't want to be seen on one side, not the other side. People look tall. I think putting you all in the front two pews is the best way to go. Mm -hmm. Come on, Jamie. 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 Come
Are you going to get into the upgrading with the thrift shop family? Absolutely. And continue to open Absolutely. 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 Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Everybody except Kelly, which you would have a talk about. Thank you. 
Oh, well, this is really different. I'll be reminded why I said I would do this. <laughs> so, get ready for some new job. We're going to worship God this morning with eyes to see and ears to hear together, please. With lips to sing and hands to help, let us worship God with the fullness of our heart and peace and for our gathering and praise of God. Help us to open up our eyes and pray not to search, 
has forgiven Dear goodness, you are forgiven. You are set free to go out into the world and be the loving, gracious, hopeful people of God. Friends, open the good news of the gospel. Jesus Christ, we are
my best friend. Has a huge mind on to do that. And she can the process is slow. So please pray for us. Sorry, with Joy, we have um, our son came in uh, with one of our grandsons, his color sitting next to him. Uh, so we've got to have three little babies with uh, He's not going to get a son because his little brother really is a huge bag. And he's got two favorite grandsons. Uh, so our son Jared's up in Strasbourg with a bunch of kids for the weekend. But uh, we just had we just had an awesome time with Doug and we talked to the tech. So proud of him, he's using his manners, and it's just a really, really fun time for our training to come up. So I uh, just thank God for that.
This morning's gospel reading is short. It is from John chapter 13, verse 34, where he says simply, I seek you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Why comes the fun? Because I have, I can honestly say I'm glad I'm not my own friends because I am not a public speaker. So I'm just going to talk to you like you're my buddies. Alright? <laughs> so you might not like what I say, but you can't answer the fact. And I'm looking out among you and I do see that there are so many people that um, have a have affected me and uh, helped me on my faith journey. I want you to know that I really appreciate all the conversations that I've had with you. And I hope that there's just even one or two words that I'm going to say today. I throw a little scripture too, because you like that. Um, and I, I just hope that something I say might inspire some positive thought or action. What I'm going to talk about today really has to do with that passage of scripture. Um, love one another. Um, and you can say it in different ways too. You can say, you know, you want the other to see what happens, do what you do, or love one another. But it's essentially, it's essentially the same thing. Um, it's just a, we have to figure out who the others are. Um, because the others, can be many things. They can be other people, they can be other religions, they can be other causes. Um, yeah, they don't have to be human, they can be animals, um, they can be the earth. Um, and I know that I see you all, I know everybody after has done, you know, very charitable acts for kitchens and help the poor, getting to different commissions. Um, we should be really proud of those things that we've done and, and continue to do them. What I wanted to share today is just a couple stories that uh, have, over the years, I think about them a lot um, as sort of a pep talk for myself to, um, to keep me headed in the right direction. I just want to share a couple of those things with you. And you may already know this, um, especially in these four people who may have seen what it is, or that they look uh, like the Bible. Um, you know the story of John Valjean, how he was, he was a con, but all he did was steal a little bit of bread, because this morning he was hungry. And um, he gets sent to prison, he works uh, in the body of a ship. He's finally he finally gets a probation. But they don't give him anything. He's dragging his floor, he's looking for a place to stay, and he ends up at the um, home of a local bishop who gives him a place to stay for the night, but during the night. He steals some silver from the bishop and he runs away and he's caught. The police take him back to the bishop who says Oh, he was my guest last night, and I gave him this silver. As a matter of fact, um, I gave him more silver. Here's some more, John Valjean. Here's some more silver. And John Valjean has never known anything but reality, so he doesn't understand what's going on. Well, then the priest or the bishop comes in to him and says, You must use the proceeds from the sale of this silver to turn the lights on. And John Valjean goes on his way. He takes him a while, but he does turn the lights on. He, he starts a potter's. He employs people. He becomes a benefactor to people. And just by this simple act of loving kindness, what the bishop has done is he's 
turned the situation around. So he might have been saying goodbye to somebody who was going to continue to live a life of crime. But instead, he turned this person into a loving, giving person who he, Jean Valjean, who he he always wanted to be because of this act of loving kindness by the bishop. So there's, there's no loser here. There's no loser here in this game. Everybody is a loser. The bishop, John Valjean, and every mother that John Valjean has. These words come from the group. Chapter 6, verse 28. Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Uh, in another case, um, in another, uh, might be somebody of a different religious belief. Again, I'm going to go back to uh, a story that I saw in the movie Gandhi, if anybody has seen that. Um, historically, uh, the subtext of the struggle to release India from colonial rule was the Hindus and the Muslims had a great deal of animosity and really hated each other. They were so there's a scene in the movie Gandhi in which a Hindu man has killed a Muslim and he comes to Gandhi asking how to relieve his guilt. Gandhi replies that the Hindu man must adopt the Muslim boy who has been left on the earth. And the man just shakes his head. He is not convinced that that would be enough to compensate. But Gandhi then says, you will raise him as a Muslim. And then the man knocks because he understands. This is a hard thing for the Hindu man to essentially betray his faith. And yet he sees the justice in the act. Instead of another bitter, regretful man, the Hindu, for having murdered, and another orphan, the Muslim, Gandhi, through his wise and just insight, has created a meaningful family relationship between enemies. So, Again, nobody's losing here. Everybody's winning. These words come from the first letter of John, chapter 4, verses 19 to 20. We love because he first loved us. Whoever claims to love God, yet hates a brother or sister, a liar. For whoever does not love their brother or sister, whom they have seen, cannot love God. Mm -hmm. They have nothing. Here's another one that affects, well, I know it affects us who live in rivers and probably all around all the river towns. Um, and that's animals. So if we've, if we've had pets or if we've observed, pets and other people, we can see that animals experience joy, boredom, fear, pain, jealousy, but everything that we experience. We have to learn to value and share space with the various animals who live in our homes. And we have to accommodate them in our neighborhoods. We may not like it. The foxes, skunks, raccoons, turkeys, and rabbits didn't ask to be They've been forced here through the loss of natural habitat. Because we most certainly need another storage facility, another gas station, another 55, another community, and another warehouse. The loss of their habitat is our doing. But who suffers? It's our doing, but they pay the consequences. We may not love insects, especially ones that might sting or bite. I've got mosquito bites all over me. But they share the earth with us and are an integral part of God's creation. All except spotted lantern flies. 
Honeybees, along with butterflies, bats, birds, and other animals, are pollinators, meaning that they pollinate flowers by transferring pollen between flowers. This is a crucial service because many plants can't reproduce without the help of pollen. And this includes crops, which is the very food we eat. Where would we be without pollinators? We might find out. Our use of commercial, non-organic pesticides and herbicides, loss of habitat, and air pollution are contributing to the destruction of our natural ecosystem, and we are doing it. These words come from Genesis, chapter 1, verse 3. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, Everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food, and it is so. Dorothy Talavera once told me that one of her favorite things is greatest I hate for her. And um, I chose that hymn. I especially love the refrain, All I Have Needed, Thy Hand Hath Provided. Breathe this like thankfulness, Lord, unto me. I look at what the Lord is doing. Literally, everything. The planet, the whole world, the stars, the moon, everything you see, everything you touch. The beauty of the earth, the Lord has given us. But how seriously do we take our faith? We say the words, we attend church on Sundays, but how have we acknowledged God's faithfulness? We need to help in small ways. Just think of the small things we can do. You take a walk, and you pick up a piece of trash, and we stop using poison on our lawns and crops. Can we use less plastic? I sort of read this to my husband last time. He said, go easy on the plastic. <laughs> but I'm talking about things that matter to you. And when you're up here, you can talk about things that matter to you. But earth matters to me. And our selfishness and short-sightedness matters to me. I have many children that I want to turn a beautiful, Flower filled, tree filled, clean air filled earth over to. I want them to live the life that I've been so fortunate to live. I'm just going to read you one of these According to Earth.org, in 1950, the world produced more than 2 million tons of plastic per year. That's in 1950. By 2015, the annual production swelled to 419 million tons of plastic. That's 2 million, 419 million tons of plastic. Think about that. I was born in 1951. Oh, sorry. It's my generation that's responsible for this. And I can't twist that back to make myself feel any better about it. I'd say a little bit more stuff in here about plastic, but I mean, just stop using plastic plates, use paper plates, they compost, they disappear. Just use it. By doing these small things, we can help future generations. We have to admit that we can do more. When we respect and preserve what God has provided, it is not too late. These words come from Galatians, chapter 6, verse 9. And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in good season we will reap, if we do not grow. I'm going to wrap it up. And if you know me, you, you know I love to pray. And I was younger, I was often. 
tennis, and now not so much of that, but actually car paint is in travel. Um, a very important thing that started um, is a physical or mental competition conducted according to rules with the participants in direct opposition to each other. So I just want to tell you that during the pandemic, I started to play an electronic game that I still play. I had a kind of a eureka moment a few months ago when I realized that I could further my game by furthering my game, furthering the game where the others in the game. Instead of playing the game with the mindset of winning, I began to play the game with the mindset of hoping. And I began to uh, I began to use a sort of a mantra as I played. I would say, how can I help? Keep on helping. I was coaching myself to always be helping, always be building, always be doing good. And I began to play, uh, uh, and that has resulted in a greater enjoyment of the game for me, better game, game play, and score. So without going into more detail about the way the game is played, I'll just say that it involves matching numbers and colors, and the numbers and colors are continuously becoming greater and moving faster, and there's more and more choices, and there's more and more obstacles to overcome. So I began to look at the speed and the obstacles and the stacks of numbers as opportunities instead of rivals. And with this help other mantra, I began to see a pattern in the design of the game by creating peaks and valleys of numbers and colors Space was created in between for movement. And when I got to the top of the peak and it seemed that there was no place left to go, I would look down into the valley and there would be an opening. And then it would just start over. Sometimes without even thinking about it, I just followed the rhythm of the game and everything seems to work out. As I play the game, I am always thinking to myself, always find a way to hope. I'm on a streak now that has lasted for months. And be clear to name this for the one building. It really is. Many times we look at each other as rivals of the least and enemies at our worst. Wouldn't it be wonderful and also a fulfillment of the teachings of Jesus if all of us could achieve mutual happiness and success by helping to ensure the happiness and success of others? Amen. Uh, she picked this in today, and I don't know that all of us know it very well. It's a beautiful hymn. But it's in number 437, and we decided that I'm going to start the hymn on the first verse, and then you guys can come in on the
may we be grateful for the connectedness of all living things, may we be mindful, and for our ability to bring about good in the world, may we go out and use our hearts, hands, minds, and voices this day and every day. And in the hymnal, hymn number 820, please use the Danish version. Thank mm -hmm. you.